we had no idea what all the other guys were doing in that different world. That's what I wanted from, to ask. Like, how much have, do, have you guys shared scenes together, or are you meeting for the first time somewhat recently? Well, that goes into the secrets. <laughs> so, nice try. Very well. I, Before you guys dive into your own production at all, do you touch the Peter Jackson films uh, just to maybe set the tone for yourself, or do you want to keep a distance from what exists? Um, I think, you know, I'll, I'll speak for myself. Um, I think it's great to have the film as a as a reference, as something that, you know, obviously is a, is a classic um, set of films. But we very much were intent on really creating our own thing. This mm -hmm. is this is our adaptation, and it's nice to have ownership over that. For me personally, it's really about Tolkien's writing, mm -hmm. and always going back to the the literature and the lore. Um, and obviously, it's inspired many adaptations, and and so you know we all get to coexist happily. So to me, you know, I know the the comparison is a natural one to make, but I think this feels like something that is a new, fresh take. Mm -hmm. And um, you can enjoy our version and you can enjoy all the other versions that are out there. Uh, Charlie, to that end, with the lore, you could get swallowed up, you know, oh, yeah. on as much oh, of it we as you want to. to. Yeah, yeah. Um, so how much do you just rely on the script, you know, what's in front of you to get through it? And how much did you branch off and deep dive into? I, d I branched off, once I arrived on set, a lot of my work was with uh, Rob Arameo, mm -hmm. who's a, a, a very, uh, he's, a, he's a very smart guy when it comes to Tolkien. And um, so I did, a, I did a lot of reading, but my character exists in, in, a, in a key, but in a very minimal way in our, in our usable source material. Mm. So as far as Celebrimbor is concerned, I did all the research I could, but Tolkien gives us a sketch, essentially, of, of I'm talking about in terms of my character. Um, and it's up to me and everyone else, all the heads of the department and the showrunners to, to contribute to the character, mm. and to bring the, the wardrobe, the, the design of the um, studio, all that stuff. So um, I, I have since done a lot more reading, um, but the, the reading I did uh, in, uh, before I started acting the role was purely focused on the character. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, Emma, when there are so many characters uh, in a series like this and so many storylines, it can be tough for the audience to keep it all straight um, and you, you know tr try to follow different plot lines and how things are grouped. Uh, how does this show in particular work to maybe avoid some of that confusion? Uh, I think the worlds are so separate and rich and beautiful in their own ways. Mm. I think there's, I remember like we saw the first three episodes a few days ago. Okay. And um, each world has its own very distinct color palette and um, atmosphere. And you can feel it coming from the first shot when we switch to a different storyline. Okay. So I think there's no trouble there. Maxim, your character is best known uh, for not destroying the One Ring uh, when he yeah. had the opportunity to do that. Sorry, <laughs> Way to go. Sorry guys. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, so now this gives you an opportunity to explore a different aspect of that character. That's primarily what he's known for. Uh, yeah. So what was it like having you know the ability to go down different roads with him? I mean, a, a privilege and an honor. Uh, definitely felt the weight of expectation of people's interpretation of this character. But mm. we're kind of at the beginning of his journey almost. And uh, I had the, I was grateful to be able to explore the you know, him finding himself and wanting to, you know, not wanting to pursue his father's dream of becoming a sea captain mm. and kind of wanting to, to do something else and, and take it in a different direction. And I think in turn, it makes him a lot more relatable and maybe you can understand him down the line, right? A little bit more. I hope so. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Daniel, I want to talk about fan theories, if I could. Sure. Um, there have been some fun ones out there about your character, uh, primarily being associated with the, what they call the Meteor Man. Right. Uh, how much have you read up on this? Uh, I'm not going to ask you to clarify anything unless you want to right now, but uh, do you have fun sort of exploring fan theories? Uh, I, when it all started, I, I, I did. And now I sort of think it's so massive. And right. actually, it's sort of so exciting that people are having those, those discussions quite aside from anything that I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So I'm sort of letting that all cook away, but I'm really excited that when we, you know, in under, nearly under a month, we're gonna we're gonna be able to start showing people what, we, what we've got in terms of this character. And then those discussions are gonna start really honing in and that's when it'll get sort of even funner, I think. So I'm, I'm waiting for that. Are you sort of fending off uh, from friends and family? Yeah, <laughs> but that, that's been going on for, you know, 
two years because for all of us really that we we've been trying to keep a lot of under wraps so that when people see it on screen it's the first time they're experiencing things sure and to that end um it's my when was the moment when it actually felt the enormity of it all felt real to you on set i was gonna say the enormity of it a whole age on set the first time i'm assuming yes what would that feel like a rock star moment yeah yeah uh, yeah, yeah. Rockstar moment was so great. Can you see far out? You can, but you definitely can feel that wave of energy. Like right? you really can, and it's like, and, and for the most part, it feels. I mean, it feels positive. You, know? you just feel like you're there to be celebrated and embraced. Um, but uh, for me, on set, uh, the enormity of it all. <laughs> to be honest, first first day on set, really. You know? I I got in full costume, full prosthetics, and just saw this incredible world that they have built inside a sound stage in which every aspect of it was thought out um, and and obsessed over mm -hmm. and thought about. Even things that you know they're not gonna make in camera. Okay. So so but it was all part of the environment and that's the, the commitment that I think is the through line for the show and right. the through line through, uh, the characters as well. So um, Tolkien, when he was writing Lord of the Rings, had a lot of parallels to World War II uh, at the time. And I'm curious how you guys think the show speaks to our modern yeah, age, if it does at all. Well, I think it does. Do I think, I mean, I think all art uh, is rep representative of the times and it's not really that the art doesn't have to speak to the times i think the times speak to the art and like uh, people have the lens of what's happening right now they will definitely feel and uh they will definitely find their own attachments their own uh metaphors and their own stories mm. i think because it is so driven by humanity mm. and it's so driven by truth and honesty that it's going to be universal in that sense right um, when you guys were filming, were you had a sense of, of what uh, content was going into each episode? Could you guys, like, could you think of an episode that you can't wait for fans to see? Or when you were filming, it was just one massive story? Well, I know for me, my first day was toward the end of the season. Okay. So I had this interesting process of almost working backwards a little bit. Right. Um, this story really ramps up and in each of the worlds there's a real sort of build to a crescendo and and so there's some stuff toward the end of the season that i know i can't wait to see mm. um and what i really take pleasure in again is that you know i'm excited for what happens in my own world but i love watching my friends in their worlds sort of just have these amazing stories and they just bring these characters to life. I know these people, I'm continuing to get to know them. I love them so much. And it's just exciting to just sort of watch your friends do their thing and really bring a true sense of who they are to these characters. And that's that's something that we've only been afforded recently, very recently. We, we had no idea what all the other guys were doing in the other different worlds. That's what I wanted to ask, Not like how much, how, do, have you guys shared scenes together or are you meeting for the first time somewhat recently? Well, that goes into secrets. So <laughs> <laughs> so nice try. <laughs> uh, but what is a, a, a character moment, Charlie, that you can't wait to, for fans to experience? Whether maybe maybe be a meeting between certain characters or it's that's difficult to talk about okay. um but <laughs> uh i think i think for, for him uh, for me and i'm so excited to be playing this role that has never been to my knowledge been played before mm -hmm. other than in a video game um but i don't play video games so you know i don't know what he's like in that game but um it's uh and it will be the first his first appearance i think it's it's uh because it, you, when you see him in situ in his workplace, right. it, 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 and you know what, what may be coming later in the, in the show, okay. it kind of it sets the scene. And that's very exciting to be okay. part of. I will get you guys out of here on this. Uh, how do you guys feel about binging versus you know, waiting a week in between or waiting for some time in between? Good things come to those who wait. <laughs> yeah. uh, really? I think okay. it's, you know, let it linger and, <clears throat> and maybe watch it again. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think it's, you know, I know it's like, like imagine someone setting a really delicious pie in front of you and you could eat the whole pie, mm -hmm. but that would be a lot. You know, mm -hmm. Wouldn't you rather spread it out over the week or over no, the week? No. <laughs> I think it would do it a disservice to yeah. it. Right. I think it's, it is such high quality 
Totally. The conversation is going to be so big that you're not going to be able to, exactly. to get away from spoilers. I think every week people should tune in at a time and like enjoy it and be part of the conversation. And actually to watch it communally, I think will be, because I was thinking, yeah, actually I want to watch this. I know Amazon do the, the watch parties, but I think that kind of communal watching could be really great. It's yeah. such fun watching it together. Because one of the issues about when a, a full season drops is you never know where anybody is in it. Mm. And the first question you always ask is like, how far have you watched? You know, what episode are you on kind of thing. So I do really appreciate when everybody's at the same point in the story and then people can talk about it. Yeah. So mm. I can't wait till we can all start experiencing it. Thank you guys Thank for coming you. by. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.